Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today, we are continuing our coverage of the ongoing civil war taking place inside of the former state of Ethiopia. And uh, today, we've heard uh, more reports of, uh, of, of a successful operation and ongoing operations by the Oromo Liberation Army, specifically uh, within the area of operations near Ambo. And as, as you know, I have uh, uh, conducted a, uh, a, a prior video in which uh, I had discussed the Oromo Liberation Army and its uh, operations specifically uh, that are now very, very close to uh, the fairly large town of Ambo, which is uh, just to the west uh, of uh, the capital uh, of Addis Ababa, uh, again also known as uh, fin Fene for the Oromo audience. And uh, let's just look at uh, how far from the center of uh, Addis Ababa we're looking at in terms of uh, these uh, Oromo Liberation Army uh, operations near Addis Ababa. So again, as a bird flies, uh, Ambo is, is roughly 62 miles to the west of, uh, of Addis. So what we're hearing is that for all intents and purposes, the Oromo Liberation Army has in fact surrounded Ambo but more importantly, and this is, this is a very, very uh, important operation that uh, quite possibly the, uh, the OLA has conducted and achieved uh, in terms of seizing control of this major strategic terrain feature. It's a Gorfo Mountain, and it overlooks the city of Agudur. Again, and Agudur is directly to the, uh, the west of Ambo. And in fact, we have received some reports that indicate that the OLA has in fact actually entered uh, Guder itself. And uh, if, we, if we zoom in, you can see while the uh, seizing of this, uh, of this mountain that overlooks Guder is, uh, is fairly important. And uh, we, we don't know if the uh, the Romo Liberation Army has the ability uh, to put uh, mortars or heavy artillery. Again, for the most part, from the video evidence that I have seen, uh, the OLA continues to be a, uh, a, a light infantry force with, with not a lot of, uh, of, of heavy artillery, if any, and, uh, and, and some, some mortars. But, but again, for the most part, uh, it continues to be this uh, this light infantry force, but again, uh, seizing control of uh, Gorfo Mountain uh, was uh, a a hell of a feat for the Oromo Liberation Army in its continued efforts uh, to tighten its grip on the area around Ambo and possibly uh, the eventual capture of both Ambo and uh, Guder. But uh, that's kind of where we're sit right we're sitting right now in terms of uh, ongoing OLA operations to the west of uh, Addis. And I wanted to take this opportunity instead of using the, uh, the normal map that I use where you can physically look and see the size of said towns and cities uh, west of Addis and just get an idea of just how, how large of a town, of a city, uh, Ambo truly is. And, uh, and this is also uh, recognition of the achievement of the OLA. I mean, prior, uh, just a year ago, we were not seeing the Oromo Liberation Army having the ability to seize control of fairly large towns inside of the former state of Ethiopia. Now we're seeing the uh, OLA uh, threaten some fairly large towns and cities and uh, have proven the capability to seize control of some of these larger towns and cities, uh, in some cases, such as Ambo, very, very not not too far from the uh, the capital, and uh, and also again sees a very very important terrain features, such as Gorfo Mountain. But uh, that's kind of the status right now in terms of this ongoing operation. Again, watching it very closely, there was also some uh, some comments in terms of. Uh, uh, questioning 
uh, that uh, the fact that the Oromo Liberation Army, given its size, and uh, given that the uh, the Abi loyalist formations are are obviously much larger, uh, the ENDF, uh, the the Amhara Regional Militias Fano have have much larger force constructs than the Oromo Liberation Army. Then how how is it possible? that the uh, Oromo Liberation Army achieved success. Well, again, the, the, the B loyalist formations may have, uh, on paper, larger forces, and, and in fact, they may have, in fact, actual larger forces. But again, you have to look at the motivation of said forces, and I think if you go back to, uh, to, to other uh, wars that have taken place throughout history and, and just most recently if we if we go back and we look at let's say the uh, the the ISIS uh, successful operation in seizing control of Mosul and obviously uh, the uh, the Iraqi army on paper was much larger than ISIS and uh, now some of those forces may have been uh, ghost uh, personnel but uh, at the end of the day, most people would acknowledge that the Iraqi force construct, the Iraqi forces in Mosul, were far bigger than the attacking forces of ISIS, which again seized control of Mosul. Now, the, the ISIS forces did this with, with probably uh, anywhere from 800 to about 1,200 personnel. Again, these, these formations were very aggressive and uh, were very well motivated to launch this operation into Mosul, while at the same time, uh, Iraqi forces, uh, not so much. Uh, Iraqi forces were, were, were proven that uh, they were not motivated to fight ISIS during the, uh, the, the ISIS seizure of Mosul. Now look, I'm not uh, comparing uh, the Oromo Liberation Army uh, to ISIS. Again, just from a military perspective, what I'm trying to say is, is if, again, you have a smaller, much more motivated force uh, that is willing to act aggressively and tenaciously, then uh, that much smaller force many times has the ability to prevail over much larger forces in some cases. Now, is, is, this, is this the facts on the ground in terms of what we're seeing uh, inside of uh, the former state of Ethiopia, specifically in regards to the Oromo Liberation Army? Well, I would say that, uh, one, the Oromo Liberation Army is much bigger now, a year into the, the, the heavy fighting that has taken place, than it was at the start of uh, the actual... Uh, let's just say the uh, the B loyalist invasion of the uh, Tigray region. So again, two different areas of, of operations, but uh, that war that uh, entered the Tigray region allowed the Oromo Liberation Army to uh, to continue to grow and get bigger and uh, conduct set operations that that it's that it's conducting right now. And uh, again, it would not surprise me that uh, we could see further operations by the Oromo Liberation Army, again, acting in a much more aggressive and tenacious manner than uh, the, uh, the adversarial forces it's fighting against in the form of the B loyalist formations, uh, the, uh, st some of the still loyal uh, Oromo regional forces. Many of them uh, we continue to hear about coming over to the side of the Oromo Li Li Liberation Army, and then obviously the uh, the Amhara regional forces as well. Uh, we have seen uh, more reports, in fact, coming in about some of the fighting that took place in uh, the Amhara region and the processes that uh, the Amhara regional forces took to deploy a lot of its uh, inflated forces that were deployed against the uh, Tigrayan Defense Forces, and in fact, those forces suffered greatly at the hands of the Tigrayan Defense Forces. A lot of the forces that, that the, the Amhara Regional Forces deployed against the TDF uh, had a total of one day's training. In fact, we've heard many reports in which individuals, uh, be it city workers, librarians, 
uh, healthcare workers, what have you, uh, unemployed individuals uh, under the auspice of one day's training were then, uh, after this one day's training, were then forced uh, to the front lines uh, by uh, some of these Amhara regional forces to fight against the Tigrayan Defense Forces. And we kind of saw the product of that uh, very low-level training uh, take place in areas such as uh, Gashina and uh, Lalibela and other areas uh, as the uh, uh, the Amhara regional forces attempt to attempted to regain ca uh, territory from the uh, Tigrayan defense forces. It just didn't work too well. And again, we're kind of seeing the same thing happen uh, west of Addis Ababa. A lot of these uh, OLA fighters have been have been in the field for some time, have been uh, training and fighting. And again, a lot of these uh, these uh, be loyalist formations have not received as much training. And again, uh, in all probability, are proving to be uh, not as motivated in terms of a fighting force to en engage the Oromo Liberation Army, just as we saw uh, some of these forces not have the motivation to engage the Tigrayan Defense Forces uh, within the course of that conflict as well. But again, uh, we're watching uh, very, very closely what's happening near uh, Gudur and, uh, and then obviously uh, what is taking place uh, around uh, Ambo as well. Again, uh, it's possible that uh, we have heard reports, uh, that though we have not been able to confirm that as yet, that uh, the, uh, the OLA has entered Gudur. And uh, we also hear that it has, again, uh, seized control of the major terrain feature, uh, strategic terrain feature, which is uh, Gorfo Mountain to the uh, west, uh, northwest of uh, Gudur. Uh, that's what we have for today. Uh, more to come as we continue our coverage of the uh, ongoing civil war in the former state of Ethiopia. Have a good day, everybody.